Today's video is all about fighting from a shoulder to shoulder position after bumping in, which is an inside fighting entry discussed in part one of this series. We're gonna talk about how to make space to punch, off balance your opponent, and create angles on the inside, as well as how to counter an inside fighter trying to bump in on you. But first, let's quickly review the lessons from part one, as well as some basics about this shoulder to shoulder position to make sure we're all up to speed. So let's review our entry. Bumping in involves slipping outside and underneath the orthodox opponent's lead hand, which also puts your head far enough away from the rear hand to allow you to react to any threats from that side. You can slip reactively in response to a punch or proactively before any movement has been initiated from your opponent in order to secure this position. The slip can be naked with no setup or covered by a punch or a parry or a feint or whatever else you would use to move your head to that back hip position. You also have the option of stepping the lead foot forward towards your opponent as you initiate the slip. But as we stressed in part one, the head and rear foot do not move forward at this stage. With our head in a relatively safe position, outside and underneath the opponent's lead hand and quite far away from their rear, we slide into our opponent with basic fundamental boxing footwork. Lead foot first, rear foot second. And as the back foot moves in, our head, torso, and body mass shifts forward, bumping the shoulder into contact with the opponent's guard or shoulder if they're good enough to take the position and sticking there. You've now reached today's inside fighting position. If your opponent left their guard up, thank them for it. You'll have way more options on the inside working from a shoulder pressure position with a low lead hand and the head outside the opponent's lead shoulder than they will hiding behind a high guard where they've handcuffed themselves, given up that bulldozer leverage, and limited their ability to control space. If your opponent's any good on the inside and they haven't countered you on the way in, using the technique we'll cover a bit later, chances are they'll meet you in this shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder position, putting you in a 50-50 situation where controlling space is key. From the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder position, your head is outside their lead hand, sometimes even resting on the outside of your opponent's lead shoulder. I like to cue some of my boxers to imagine pinching the opponent's lead shoulder between their own shoulder and their rear hand, which leaves no space for meaningful punches from either side. In this position, it's very important that your hips stay close to your opponents. This is the only way that you'll be able to apply any meaningful pressure with the upper body and the shoulder specifically without leaning the upper body forward and exposing yourself to uppercuts. From the moment you bump into this position to the moment you abandon it for something else, you need to always be thinking about controlling space, fighting to maintain your base, and keeping your posture strong. Your goal is to make space when you want to punch and take space when your opponent does, all while keeping your feet under you and maintaining strong posture. If any of this is new to you and you don't recognize the bumping in technique even by another name, I highly recommend that you go and check out part one now before moving on to our space making techniques. The chicken wing is one of my favorite inside fighting techniques that I use to make space for the rear hand or disrupt my opponent in a shoulder to shoulder position. The name refers to the shape and movement of your arm, which kind of looks like the way you'd flap your arm dancing the funky chicken. For our purposes, it's similar to the L guard or the wall, which we covered in our video on elbow blocks. However, when using the chicken wing, the arm needs to be tucked up close against the body rather than being held out in front of you to ward off incoming shots. Start in a shoulder to shoulder position with the lead hand held low and the forearm tucked between you and your opponent. Bumping in takes you to this position so if you haven't seen part one of this series please go watch that now from here i use a full body movement rotating my hips and torso as i flare that chicken wing arm out the combined rotation of your body which shifts the weight towards the back foot almost like a lead hook to turn the lead shoulder over plus the strength of that chicken wing allows you to shift the opponent backwards and sometimes even right off balance as you simultaneously load your rear hand for an attack on that side. Now crucially, if you're planning to follow up with offense, it's important that you don't throw them back too far with this movement. And you'd be surprised with the amount of leverage and force you can generate on this move, you can really send people flying. The key is to move them just enough, creating just enough space for your punch to get in without forcing you to reach or leaving too much space that your opponent can use against you. Going back to what we said in the last section, another important tip 
is to make sure your hips are close to the opponent. A big mistake I see with a lot of beginners who aren't comfortable standing inside their opponent's bubble yet is that they keep the hips much too far back and end up reaching forward with the forearm to make contact with their opponent. That means they're initiating this chicken wing with their arm already flared out, thus robbing themselves of all that powerful rotation that you get by starting from the correct position. So if you're having trouble generating enough force with this movement to shift an opponent backwards, you may just need to stand closer. As far as punch options go, it's really up to you. I use the chicken wing most often to set up my rear hand because the rotation makes sense, but you can definitely use it to set up your lead, whether you choose to rotate back to the lead side to load a power shot or work with the head over the rear hip with something less committal. Beyond what the chicken wing can do for you offensively, it's great on the defense. The full body version of the move shifts the opponent's weight back, which makes it very difficult for them to generate significant power coming forward at that moment. You can also make it an arm only chicken wing and flare out the elbow using the forearm and glove to trap the opponent's hand and stop them punching. However you choose to use it, the chicken wing's worth adding to your inside fighting arsenal. elbow control technique uses a hand control option on the inside to facilitate a quick step around the orthodox opponent's lead shoulder to create a dominant angle and load a powerful punch with the lead hand. Here Kenny Weldon demonstrates his version of the elbow control technique. Watch this, just like this and I'm going to shove him. So quite simply, from the shoulder to shoulder position, I change levels slightly, ideally bringing me near eye level with my opponent's elbow or tricep, which I can hook around behind with the open palm of my glove. From here, I drive the elbow across the opponent's body to my left as an orthodox fighter as I circle around to my right. The footwork is flexible. You can just step around, you can pivot, or you can step and shuffle as we covered in a previous video. What matters most is that you maintain control of that elbow and really shove it across the opponent's body. Keeping control of that elbow allows you to use it as a handle, which can help you move and orient your body as you circle to the right. It also makes it harder for the opponent to turn to face you because you're essentially holding them in place with that hand. Elbow control also traps that opponent's hand, reducing the threat from that side. Finally, the elbow control and the accompanying shove can really mess up the opponent's guard. So even if you don't create a hole right away, an opening may appear as they put their guard back together and turn to face you. As with the chicken wing, the elbow control technique offers an obvious follow-up punch. As an orthodox fighter circling around to my right and rotating my shoulders to get more out of that shove, any power punch with the lead hand makes sense. And just like the chicken wing, the elbow control technique does not only have to be used for offense. A relaxed step around with elbow control is a great way to take a breath, buy yourself a second, or just upset your opponent's balance. So again, whether you're trying to get away from your opponent's power hand or move even further into safety, on their dead side, or trying to set up a big power lead hand of your own, the elbow control technique is a winner. So before we wrap this up, I wanna give you a quick tip on how to counter an opponent who's trying to bump in on you. Here we see Ricky Hatton's brother, Matthew Hatton, doing his best to bump in on Canelo but Canelo stops him dead in his tracks while also creating punch opportunities using what I call the wedge. And the name is pretty self-explanatory. We see Canelo wedging his glove and forearm and elbow in between himself and Hatton. He's jamming that wedge up against Hatton's head, neck, and shoulder, the very shoulder that Hatton is trying to bump in up against him. So when you successfully read your opponent's attempt to bump in, Drop that wedge down onto their neck or shoulder and create as much of an opposing force as you can to stop their forward momentum without compromising your balance. And know this, as you drive forward with that wedge into their neck and shoulder, you can also draw the bow, cocking the rear hand for a power punch to fire back with, as Canelo does throughout this clip. Guys, on behalf of the short boxing team, I hope you enjoyed this Inside Fighting series. I sure had a great time making it. So give us a like if you learned something. And don't forget to subscribe for more boxing videos like these. Thanks guys, stay safe.